Okay, so today we're going to have a look at something called autocatalysis. Autocatalysis is made up of the word auto, which comes from the Greek autos, uh, which means to do something to yourself, um, and catalyst, catalysis, uh, which is uh, obviously to do with a catalyst, something that speeds up a chemical reaction without getting used up or permanently changed itself. So it's a chemical reaction that speeds up uh, itself. It's easier to explain this uh, with an equation. So we've got two manganate 7 ions here. And they will react with 5 ethane dioate or what they used to be called oxalate ions, but we'll call them ethane dioate because that's uh, something we've come across before. Um, and this solution needs to be acidified, so we've got 16 H plus ions in here. So this reaction produces uh, Mn2+, plus, so manganese 2+, plus, and that's uh, produced uh, when the manganate, uh, uh, the manganese 7 in the manganate ion is reduced to manganese 2+. Plus. It also produces 10 CO2 molecules, and in order to deal with the uh, hydrogens um, and the oxygens in the manganate ion, we'll need uh, uh, eight water molecules. So this is a reaction that we need to know. And it's a slow reaction. Uh, even at 60 degrees Celsius, it's a slow chemical reaction. It starts very, very slow. But the reaction produces Mn2 plus ions. And these Mn2 plus ions can act as a catalyst for this reaction here. I'm going to show you the two equations for that in a moment. Um, the, the whole process is a little bit complicated, actually. Theoretically, you have to know all of them. Uh, but we're, let's really focus on this one now and the graphs that I'm going to show you. So the key thing to take away from this is that this, the reaction between the manganate 7 ions and the ethane dioate ions, is slow, even at a raised temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. That manganese 2 plus ions can uh, catalyze this reaction. We know this because um, if we were to actually add manganese 2 plus ions at the beginning of the reaction, we would see that the reaction is significantly faster. But let's think about how it's auto catalyzed. So as I said, this reaction is, um, is slow to start with. But let's think about uh, a reaction uh, that isn't slow. So if we were to plot uh, a graph of amount of reactant, which we could measure in different ways, concentrations uh, or, or uh, moles, um, we would see a graph that looks like this. The gradient is steepest at the beginning of the reaction. So this is fast at the beginning. Um, and then it slows as we run out of particles. So as the reactant particles are being used up here, the rate of reactant reaction slows. And if we were to carry this graph on, would see actually that this graph uh, levels off when the reaction stops, so when all the reactants have started. So this is a normal reaction. There's um, uh, no catalyst involved at this stage. There's certainly not any autocatalyst reaction. Uh, it's just a normal plot of a reaction. Now, what we see with um, this graph here is a slow reaction. So the rate of decrease is quite small to start with because it's slower than a reaction here. But then suddenly the reaction becomes much faster and the amount of product falls off much faster. And then again, it will level off at the beginning. In all honesty, I probably have drawn this graph a little bit extremely because I wanted to make a point. Um, it probably wouldn't look quite as fast to drop off here. So this reaction at the beginning is relatively slow. But at this point, the amount of catalyst has built up uh, enough to catalyze the reaction. And the key difference between these graphs, obviously the, the, the slope is different here, is that the rate suddenly increases. So the gradient suddenly becomes much steeper halfway through or after a period of time. 
whereas in an unauto catalyzed reaction or as even in, in, a, in a normal catalyzed reaction we would always see this shape graph in one form or another another so the reaction is fast at the beginning and gradually slows down over time until uh, it stops in an auto catalyzed reaction we see at some point after the beginning of the reaction, the reaction suddenly speeds up again. So that's what's happened at this point here. We've built up enough of the catalyst in here for the uh, reaction to suddenly get faster. So it's a very, very different shape uh, to that one. If I was going to, go to try and plot these two graphs, uh, obviously the, the key thing is, is they are actually for different reactions, these. But we'd see a normal reaction or a normal catalyzed reaction. And then in this one, we see a reaction where um, the rate suddenly increases uh, here. So this one is an autocatalyzed reaction, uh, and this one is not an autocatalyzed reaction. So I said we were going to have a look at the two equations. Uh, they are a little bit on the complicated side, um, uh, but you may be able to see uh, what's happening in here and also uh, well, how we end up with the balanced equation that we do end up with. So uh, the MnO4 minus, which if we remember, uh, and I'll just get this one back here, which if we remember at the beginning um, was the manganate ion, this will react with the Mn2 plus ion. Uh, they have opposite charges, so they're going to be attracted towards each other. So these will react with each other um, and... Um, uh, a, a reaction takes place. Um, and the reaction that takes place is the uh, manganate, manganese in the manganate 7 ion is reduced to Mn2+. Plus, so that's the fate of that. And then this is temporarily oxidized to Mn3+. Plus. So you can see why I said it's actually quite a complicated equation uh, because we've basically got manganese um, in two oxidation states on both of these. Um, and also, I think this probably causes some confusion here, but these are different manganese ions. So this Mn2 plus comes from the manganate 7. This Mn3 plus comes from this Mn2 plus here. And then uh, because these are half equations, we will need to include the electrons and also water there. Um, there's a second step to this reaction. So here is our ethane dioate or oxalate ion. This will also then react actually with the Mn3 plus that has been produced in the previous step. Um, and it will reduce the Mn3 plus back to Mn2 plus. So our uh, auto catalyst um, is Mn2 plus in step one reactant and is a product in step two. Uh, product. So we can see that overall it hasn't changed in the reaction. So if we were going to take one key idea away from this, it's that uh, an autocatalyst, autocatalytic catalytic reaction is one where the catalyst is formed as a product during the reaction. And the reaction therefore suddenly speeds up after the reaction has started. Here are the two equations we need to know. Um, if you actually multiply this top equation by 2 and this bottom equation by 5 in order to balance the electrons and then cancel everything out, you will actually end up with uh, this equation at the top. But that really isn't the focus of, uh, of this lesson. The focus is really for us to have an understanding of this equation, the fact that in an autocatalytic reaction, the catalyst is a product in the reaction. And also that we have an idea that the graphs look different. The amount of reactant over time graphs look different because the gradient suddenly becomes steeper after the reaction has started, unlike an uncatalyzed or a normal catalyzed reaction where the reaction is fast to start with and slow later on. Thank you very much.